In this video tutorial we're going to do another sale by using more of the options in the main sales screen so we can demonstrate better for you. Let's say we want to uh, sell um, three bottles of water. Let's say it's that um, item of bottles of water that we entered in the inventory in one of the previous tutorials where we had them entered and set up uh, as uh, their barcode being the item ID or item number so we can sell them by scanning their barcodes. So now since we want to sell three bottles of water we can sell them all one one at a time meaning scan them all one at a time you know scan three times or you can just in the quantity box enter three and then just scan the barcode once and it enters the three bottles of water on the main sales screen. Let's say for the next item we want to give a discount so we're going to go ahead and click the discount button. As you can see it has multiple options in here. The first two options are a percentage discount and the last option is a fixed amount discount. Now uh, the percentage discounts um, they have two options because as a percentage the discount of course has to be taken out from some amount from something it has to be a percentage of something. So the two options that you have is it can be taken out from the items that you've pro processed so far, meaning the items that are already on the screen, like in our case in here, the three bottles of water. So that will be this second option in here if we wanted to do that. That says discount all items processed so far. Or if you want to discount the items that are going, that are going to be added to this bill later, meaning after activating the discount, then you select the first option that says discount each item at a time as you process each item, meaning as I scan the items now after I do this, it's going to discount them. It's not going to involve the ones that already have been scanned. And I'm going to select this option for now. But just so you know all the options in here, the last one, the fixed amount discount, pretty self-explanatory. It's going to give you a discount of a fixed amount that you're going to enter in here. Um, let's say you want to enter a $10 fixed amount discount, right? Uh, what the software is going to do is just going to enter a negative $10 entry in this sale. So it's going to give you a $10 discount on the whole bill. So as I said, we're going to stick to the first option, which is a percentage, percentage discount, and it's going to apply only to the items that I'm about to enter right now after I do this, not the items that we scanned so far. So I'll hit next and it's just going to ask us about the amount, what the amount is for this percentage discount. Um, let's say we enter 30 as in 30%. So you can see this uh, discount button in here got colored differently and it has the value of 30% on it. That's kind of like to remind you that right now you have a 30% discount on or activated so whatever you scan from now on it could be one item or multiple items they all ring up with a 30 percent discount let's say we'll use uh, one of the buttons that we created in one of our earlier videos let's say this seven up in here i'm just going to click the button and it's going to enter the item with a 30 percent discount onto the bill now let's say uh the next um the next uh, items that we enter in here for sale we don't want to give any more discount so uh, for those we're just going to deactivate this this discount right now and you do that by simply clicking on this button so let's say I'm going to add um, a fourth bottle of water yet another bottle of water to this sale and then let's pretend that this happened by mistake just so we show you how the uh, delete option works if you want to delete a single item. So let's say we entered this water in here by mistake now. So I'm just going to select that item line and I'm going to click the option that says delete a line. And that's how we remove something. Now let's say the first item that we have in here, they're actually the three bottles of water, the first line item. Uh, let's say we want to edit the price on that. We just select this row and we're going to hit edit price. Right now the price is $4.50. Let's say we make it even $4. And that's how you edit a price during sale time. Now let's say our customer uh, wants something special, something custom that we don't have in our inventory, yet we're able 
and willing to accommodate them so we want to technically sell something right now on the fly that we don't have entered in inventory uh, let's say we have I don't know coffee in inventory well let's say the client wanted some kind of a large coffee or something uh, for simplicity in here we'll just stick to that example and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the button that says custom item it's just gonna ask you for your confirmation in case you click the button by mistake and uh, it's asking you for the name of this item let's just name it large coffee keep it simple now it's asking you for a description which is like I guess a longer description if you'd like and just enter custom large coffee it's gonna ask you for a sale price let's say it's dollar fifty and the tax in percentage uh, in percent that's seven percent tax as we said in our state now we're gonna hit OK and uh, that's the custom item added to this bill so as you saw it just asked you for the um, you know minimum amount of information needed in order to create an item that doesn't exist in inventory and sell it now let's say this customer is going to pay with a check just to see how that option works uh, we're gonna select the check option in here from the f f menu of uh, payment choices and we'll go ahead and click tender it's gonna ask you to input the check number in here now please understand this is uh, totally optional if you don't want to enter anything in here that's alright if you enter just whatever is also alright but if you do enter the uh, correct check number for that check it's going to always tie to this sale it, that data is going to be tied to this sale the check number that is so if later on you have some kind of a problem something um, that occurred that um, makes you wanna uh, you know look up history look up this invoice tie it to the check find out which check the sale was paid with you always have this information to tie the check to that exact sale so go ahead and click OK. It's going to inform us the transaction is done. Now for those that uh, elect to um, collect customer info with every sale, this screen pops up, of course, which is collecting customer info. Now we want to show you what happens and how this looks like when a returning customer appears and you already have the info in the database as we said in one of the previous tutorials if the info is already in the database of the customer what happens as soon as you uh, enter in uh, data in some of these uh, fields that are considered unique identifiers for a customer like first and last name and then you tab away to another field it's going to look up the info find that it's an existing customer and it's going to fill in everything automatically so you don't have to fill any more than that or that also applies to the home phone number cell work phone number the email all those are unique identifiers that identify the customer uniquely and it will look it up and if it finds it it prefills it for you to let you know that's an existing customer and to save you from too much typing let's say the home phone number we're gonna enter it now and as soon as we click on the on another field or tab away this is what happens since it's an existing customer and it gives you two options now basically which is to do no changes if you don't want to do any changes to this info on the customer or to do update if you want to do changes in which case you will change some of this data or add some new data to to this and then press update to save the changes right now we're just gonna go with the no changes option and that's how you do that cell